Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming for our faculty development session this afternoon. As you can see from our entry slide, we're going to be talking about integrating osteopathic concepts and the assessment of um, students and learners, and particularly osteopathic clinical precepting of primary care and OMM. This is a, uh, a portion of our faculty development curriculum we have in our top key program. And we have, uh, the, I'm, this is I'm Evelyn Schwallenberg, and our other co-presenters and working on this uh, project is Michael Rowain and Tyler Simmons. So our objectives of this session, particularly, is to really talk about the recent focus on assessment. We've talked about assessment in, in faculty uh, sessions all the time and how we have to assess our learners. But more particularly, there's been specific focus recently. And really talk about some of the challenges. Anyone who has done any kind of precepting know there's all kinds of challenges in regard to assessment from the preceptor side as well as administrator sides. Looking and recognizing the specific concerns we have in the osteopathic profession in regard to having this um, this completed in, our, in a way in which supports our profession. We'll really spend some time talking about the components of those um, interactions of assessment, feedback, and evaluation, and really presenting some possible solutions of how we may do this in a better way. So to get us focusing on some of the concepts here, I really want to really pose a few questions for you to think about. Who's talking about, about assessment, and in, in particularly assessment in, in medical learning? When did the current focus become uh, a really a hot topic? Um, and really, what, what was the uh, nidus? What was the in, uh, inciting areas that made those a quite a focus? So, so first, what I'd like to do is really talk about the, the what and the when, and then spend some time about the who. And in reviewing the who, uh, the who I'd like to walk through some of the published articles that really reflect some of the literature on, on uh, medical education. So the what and the when really starts around the time of competencies. When we were moving forward, we've always had the responsibility of assessing our learners in the medical environment. But when we were faced with competencies, everyone was a little concerned, how do I do this and how do I do it in a different way? We were, weren't quite sure what to do with uh, the competencies. ACGME developed them in 1999. They made some defining statements about them later that same year. The AOA incorporated them a few years later. And they did it in such a way that they enrolled them over a period of time where you had to actually introduce the teaching. But the more important thing was then you were held accountable to assessing what you taught. And that tends, kind of ties into our topic today. So as far as the who's talking about it, it's just about everybody. And so some of the articles here, this is a JOA, um, JAOA article from 2003, where they were looking at national Medicare um, survey data as they were really designing the um, assessment of the clinical skills performance exam. And then ACOM in, in, in published an article in, in 2005 really assessing uh, competencies. And it really here, it really stresses looking at methods into programs. So you had to teach it as well as starting to assess it. Do you think that the assessment that teachers are talking about is the same as the assessment that accreditors are talking about? Accredited is in the point of hospital accreditation or school accreditation? School accreditation, program accreditation. Yeah, I mean, part of the issue is making sure your learners are competent for the level in which you've said. There's no such thing as, the perspective no longer is that they sit down and they learn what you, what you present to them. Teaching isn't equating with learning. You're needing to you really approve that they, in fact, have taken in that information and now can give it back in a way that makes positive outcomes for patient care. So you're being held accountable for the application of that knowledge, not just the fact that they're getting it, hence the competency. Um, the next article is from New England Journal, and this was in uh, 2007, and it really, again, focuses on assessment of the medical education in the clinical setting. Clinicians are very good at providing uh, patient care. We've always taught our learners in the clinical environment, um, but they continue to struggle with what, what does this mean for us. More recently, in the uh, Joshua Macy Foundation report in 2008, this is a, a report where we're looking at change in, in medical education and change in curriculum as we, as we look at the needs from our, for our population. If we're going to expand our medical schools, do we need to teach in a different model, the different model that we've been doing over the last 100 years? And at the same time, if we're doing it, teaching differently, do we need to evaluate differently? So when we talk about assessment, again, I think it's important to really bring up some ideas of thinking about the challenges. So I'm going to think about right now, we'll pause for a few minutes and think about what are the common challenges, common issues that we, we share, and particularly of the osteopathic profession. What are the issues facing us in regard to this type of topic in medical education.
So when we start summarizing some of the challenges, competency-based education, as we mentioned early on, has always been a challenge because we're not quite sure what to do with that. How do we decide this competency? And at what level? We, we teach all different levels of learners from MS2s, 3s, 4s, straight through postgraduate training. Having appropriate assessment tools that are assessing what we want. We know that typically if you're having a multiple choice exam, it may not be the best way, it may not be exclusionary, but not the best way to, to assess some of the competencies such as professionalism. And I think one of the quotes that I like particularly that helps summarize some of the challenges in assessment is from um, Albert Einstein. It says, not everything that counts can be counted, and not everything that is counted counts. And I think that really summarizes some of the challenges that we actually have in assessment. So when you start thinking about competency-based assessment, it really diverges from some of the things that we've typically done. When we've uh, assessed in the past, I think a lot of focus has been on you look at all the different ways and you kind of summarize them all together, the standard bell curve, and that's really based on norm referencing. And in, instead, competency-based is really looking at achieving a minimum score in each of the components. You don't just summarize them all together on average. You, you have a benchmark that they must achieve to show that they're competent in certain areas before they can move forward. The bottom of the screen is an uh, educational reference from Stiggins. It really refers to some of the information that's uh, published out there on looking at grades that are criterion reference, meaning you have criteria which you must pass, as opposed to just lumping them all together and, and, and uh, averaging them all. So with that, you have to think about some, some of the uh, models for assessment and tools, and thinking about how they really must measure the desired outcomes. So what I'd like to do is have you think for a few minutes about a little small group activity. If you are having to assess a learner's medical knowledge, skills, or attitude and, uh, and professionalism, what are the kind of tools that come to mind? And if you can think of one or two that fall under each one of those categories, write them down and we'll try to come back and we'll reflect what we get as a, a kind of a collective uh, response. Okay, now that you've had some time to think about that, and we've kind of collected some of our, our responses that we have had from uh, other interactions, these are the type of things that we see. So in medical knowledge, you see that it's pretty standard to have standardized exams and multiple choice questions, which you will see on some of your licensing boards, although they're being quite inventive by adding videos and other things, but they're still ultimately asking a question. You can have verbal case presentations where students are presenting back. How are, they, how are they having uh, their interpretation of clinical encounters? Um, you can have chart reviews and soap notes. Um, the verbal case presentations really they have to think as they go and it helps you identify how they uh, assimilate all that information together. Most students do pretty good when they're having have an extra time to sit down and write out their notes and they have time to think out their, their process. Clinical skills, it's usually an observed in either the teaching setting, you're observing a skills lab or you're watching or, or having them observe, or you're precepting in the, in the clinical environment, they, in one of the ways you may need them to actually explain back what they're going to do before you've gotten enough confidence to let them start this procedure on their own. And certainly, um, OSCEs are a good way that we measure all the time, mostly in medical school, but I know that they use simulation in, in uh, standardized patients and residencies as well. Probably the tougher things that we certainly struggle with and everyone struggles with is attitude and professionalism. It's uh, something that generally needs to be observed and you end up getting feedback from observations and, and uh, interactions that occur. Um, the 360 evaluation is really an important part of this kind of assessment because it's not just what happens with you, it incorporates what happens with patients, with staff, with uh, families, and, and other ancillary uh, um, additional pe members of the healthcare team. Again, just to review some of a little bit more extensive lists, which many of you may, may be uh, familiar with, maybe just kind of looking through this list to see if there's some other uh, thoughts that you may have. Of the list, uh, what's, what's really being a more, of a more particular um, focus is really patient outcomes. When we look at not only what happens to us as practitioners and what we're doing in our offices, but the bottom line is how well are we doing it at caring for patients. And so as we look at how we assess our learners, one of our main things is how does this, how is this learner progressing and how is that ultimately going to affect patient outcomes. So challenges in the osteopathic education. We know that we are required by the AOA to have curriculum and programs that assess evaluation tools, 
of concepts of OMM as well as application of OMM, so the actual manipulation. So what do you think might be some of the challenges that we are facing in our, in our, in our profession? Why, is, why do you think at this time is, is something that we should be talking and reflecting on some of the challenges that we have? The other thing that uh, is also a particular challenge is we look at we're expanding medical education across the country. We have new schools growing up. We have expanded branch campuses uh, happening. And what a particular concern is having enough osteopathic physicians um, trained and really in, in, uh, able to disperse and evaluate this perspective to keep our uniqueness. There's significant concern. And the AOA actually, uh, I'm sorry, ACOM did a, a survey in 2007 of the, of the deans of the different colleges, which was published in um, the Journal of American Osteopathic Association in 2008. And, and you can read here for yourself is the quote from some of the deans is the available well-trained, uh, well-qualified faculty in both basic science and clinical science uh, was cited as, by several deans as a challenge to our growth in under, undergraduate osteopathic medical education. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have the same concern for the graduate side of things. As we develop more postgraduate training programs, we need to have qualified osteopathic physicians who are able to model and assess this distinctiveness as we move forward and grow our profession. So as we think about that, kind of that seamless is what you were referring to earlier. You know, not, it's not a one individual um, uh, add-on competency, if you will, but we need to be very good at being seamless at integrating our osteopathic concepts in our precepting moments and having tools that, that assess both the philosophy as well as OMM. So our whole desired outcome is to have a competent osteopathic physician who is able to integrate osteopathic concepts, including the diagnosis and treatment. And I think one, um, another fact that is maybe a, way, a, a, a pause here to point out is many of our preceptors actually feel like they've lost their osteopathic distinctiveness because they do not incorporate OMM. And I would say that that's not necessarily the case because we have an approach to a patient. They could still embody and practice every day the philosophy of osteopathic medicine, may value OMM, may refer to their colleagues because they do a better job at doing OMM or applying that into patient care. It doesn't mean that they're any less osteopathic. So I think that uh, as we talk to our colleagues, I believe that that is part of identifying in our profession is the incorporation of those, of those uh, uh, continued practicing of that perspective. So the tools in which we, we look at, the terms that help us do our assessment, are assessment, feedback, and evaluation. And I'd like to stop and think a few moments as we have posed these questions before we move into our next section. What is assessment? What is feedback? How do they differ from each other? And how does it play, how does uh, this play into evaluation, both formative and summative? I'll give you a few moments to think about that and we'll come back and we'll review some of those terms. So when we left, we were reviewing some terms. The terms are assessment, feedback, and evaluation. So let's, let's see what some of the experts say about uh, these particular terms. So an assessment is the calculation of, uh, of value or measurement. Um, it's really looking at the learner's competencies and assessing their knowledge, skills, and attitudes, what they know and what they need to know. And really comparing those two helps us target our, our, our interaction with the learner. So we identified that they might have a specific knowledge gap that you think is very important, but if you didn't probe to find out where they were and do that type of assessment, you would have a hard time targeting your learning. So that's really the purpose of assessment. And feedback. Feedback is the information a system uses to adjust in, in reaching its goals. So if you don't tell a learner where they've missed the mark and how they are able to improve, the trajectory for their reaching the goal would be very difficult. So when you look at learners and you do any of the reviews on feedback or you ask learners what they prefer, feedback um, to a learner on their performance is a critical step. It's an absolute critical step in them being able to um, progress in, in their assessment and reach the desired goals. And if you ask learners when they go to rate their clinical preceptors, they will tell you the number one characteristics of their, their quality preceptors is, re, is receiving that feedback in a positive and timely way for them to actually make a change in their learning trajectory to reach a, a positive outcome. And they also say that what is missing most of the time in their clinical preceptorships 
is having that kind of feedback. It doesn't come to them, or if it comes to them, it doesn't come timely. Getting that type of feedback on week six of your six week rotation, the opportunity has been missed. It needs to be much more on, on target at the time that's happening, or even a formal halfway midpoint in a, in a rotation so they can see how they can make improvements. So an evaluation is the act of examining something in order to make a judgment, it kind, of an, a, kind of important, and it looks at the extent or the condition. It's a process based on factual information and observation in order to rank an individual. It's the end point deciding have they, have they met a certain goal or a target. And with evaluations, there are two forms. You can have formative evaluation, which is what you do when you give them feedback in the, in the sense as the learning is occurring with the, with the intent that their, their information and process is forming. It's intended to correct their deficits and redirect them. A summative is summary. It's the end. It's the end point where you're making a final judgment. Did they make that end point or not? And summative points in a, in a medical learner's um, education could be several places. It could be at the end of a rotation. It could be the end of each year. It could be the end when they graduate. So the summative point can move depending on the piece of the pie you're looking at. But either way, it's a place where you actually have a final judgment. Did they make the mark or they did not? And again, I've included some, um, some quotes and some references from McTai, who looks at skill development and refinement results from the com combined effects of direct instruction, modeling, which hopefully we're, we're doing a good job of, and opportunities to practice. Um, guided with ongoing feedback. This is the way we're going to get them to their, to their uh, upper skill levels. So our overall our whole point is to have a, our desired outcome is to have a competent osteopathic physician who is able to integrate osteopathic concepts into the care of their patients, including the um, application of OMM, uh, and having positive care outcomes. One of our tools that we will offer further in our, in our series here is looking at the one minute preceptor. How we can take all the concepts we just talked about as far as assessment, feedback, and evaluation and incorporate that into a clinical setting in a very timely manner to achieve all these goals and not have a large impact on your patient care. The five steps are, are reviewed here, getting a commitment, probe for supporting evidence, teach your general concepts, let them know what they've done correctly, and certainly correct their mistakes. You can get further detail on this in our next and then separates the video. So in summary, we've covered the recent focus on assessment, identified some of the common challenges to the assessment process, uh, looked at really looking at what's unique to our osteopathic profession. Now there's certainly expansion of medical uh, schools across the country, but particularly for our profession, looking at how assessment, feedback, and evaluation uh, are combined, and the purpose, uh, proposing possible solutions of looking at the one-minute preceptor. I will also include some references for this lecture. Thank you very much.